Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. Gold at $10,000 an ounce. As much as it sounds unrealistic today, history proves that it is possible. A new monetary system is coming that could see the dollar reboot and gold price revalued to at least $10,000 an ounce. I know it sounds insane or even impossible to think about this right now, but the gold revaluation have happened throughout history it seems to happen in cycles of every 40 to 50 years. In the United States, the price of gold was revalued in dollars at least twice in the past 90 years. The first time was in 1933, when President Roosevelt ordered an increase in gold price from $20 an ounce to $35 an ounce. That was nearly a 75% rise in the dollar price of gold. The second time was in 1970, when Nixon ended the conversion of dollars into gold. The strength of a nation's currency is based on the strength of that nation's economy. And the American economy is by far the strongest in the world. Accordingly, I have directed the Secretary of the Treasury to take the action necessary to defend the dollar against the speculators. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets, except in amounts and conditions determined to be in the interest of monetary stability and in the best interest of the United States. Your dollar will be worth just as much tomorrow as it is today. Following the President Nixon announcement, the gold went up from $35 an ounce up to $800 per ounce in less than nine years. That was 2,200% increase in price. In fact, the price increase in the 70s was a movement four times larger than gold would need to do it today to reach $10,000. So when the world's economy is in trouble, when the debts are too high, there are four stages used by governments and central banks. The first stage, lowering interest rates. Today we have 0% interest rates in the United States and some countries have rates below zero. The second stage is QE or quantitative easing. That is just money printing, bailing out companies that are too big to fail like banks. Our governments have already passed this stage as well. The third stage is the helicopter money. The definition of helicopter money is basically money falling from the skies. Our governments already passed this stage sending stimulus check to citizens on a desperate way to save the economy. Please understand, if the economy is doing great, then the economy doesn't need to be stimulated. These measurements are used in the final stages of a, di a dying economy system. The last and final stage is a new monetary system that could possibly include the gold revaluation. But why gold has to be revalued in price? The world debt is too high. In fact, the debt is much higher than all the money in circulation in the world. So it's impossible to pay all the debt because there is not enough money in existence to pay for it. The world debt in 2020 was equal to $281 trillion with T, $281 trillion and all the money in circulation in the world is equal to 37 trillion. So the debt is almost eight times larger than all the currency in existence. However, all the central banks hold gold in their reserves. And with a simply gold price revaluation, this $281 trillion in debt becomes once again affordable and can simply disappear overnight. So let's say what specialists say about this possibility. Gold revaluations have been used in the past for uh, uh, national reliquifications. Uh, Roosevelt did, uh, did it uh, back in 1933 and 1934. Uh, a British economist named uh, Peter Miller uh, a few years ago wrote a paper on how the revaluation of gold has been used throughout uh, history to avert debt deflations and reliquify the uh, financial system. Uh, I'm pretty confident it's going to happen again, and I, I just want to live so long to see it.
So I really think what you're going to see sometime before the end of this decade is a huge deflationary crash and then countries will print our, uh, their way right into hyperinflation because what will happen is they'll print and nothing will happen. And they'll print and nothing will happen. Because as they print, people are still scared and they'll save that currency and they won't spend it. And they keep on printing and in my book I wrote that you know, the, like the U.S. government could do helicopter drops. They could refund all the tax that you've ever paid in your entire lifetime. Eventually, there will come a time where people say, you know what, I've got enough saved up for retirement, and I really deserve a new car, or I really deserve a new big screen TV. And when people start getting comfortable and that currency comes out into circulation and velocity picks up, you can have a hyperinflation without having to have the, the countries print their currencies into oblivion. So there's going to be no currency necessarily changing hands, but what you're going to see is the value of currency plummet and the value of precious metals skyrocket. We have the greatest opportunity in history laid at your feet right now. The opportunity is the spread between these two. This was the amount of opportunity, and they um, revalued gold in 1934 to 35 bucks an ounce, and the value of the gold at the Treasury once again equaled the value of all the paper currency, the base money in circulation. What Mike Maloney is saying is that these two lines must eventually meet again, and the gap between the lines represents your investment opportunity. The orange line represents the price of gold, and the blue line represents the money supply. In the years 2000, after the dot-com bubble, the price of gold and the money supply were equivalent. After the Lehman Brothers crash in 2008, central banks had to print money to bail out the banks and luckily for the governments, the price of gold was at the fair value, the lines met again. Since then, another massive gap between these lines, or according to Mike Maloney, they spread or opportunity, have been created. The gold price and the money supply would have met again in 2020, but it did not happen due to all the money printing to save the world's economy from the health crisis. So now the gap, spread or opportunity is the biggest in history and, as it is today, without any further money printing, there are two options for these two lines to meet. The money supply of Fed balance sheet could be reduced, but if the world debt is already eight times higher than the money supply, then this option is no longer on the table. The second option for these two lines to meet is an increase in the price of gold or gold revaluation. At the current level of money printing, gold will need to be priced at $12,250. But if the money printing doesn't stop, the gold price will have to keep increasing as well. Gold price must go 600% up to meet the money supply. That will be a gold price of $12,250 an ounce. So let's see what Peter Schiff has to say about Fed shrinking the balance sheet and the price of gold. Well, what's going to stop gold this time? They can't let rates go up because we're too broke to afford it. They're not going to be able to bluff that they're going to raise rates in the future because no one's going to believe that. They're not going to be able to pretend they can shrink the balance sheet because if they couldn't shrink it when it was four and a half trillion, how are they going to shrink it when it's 10 trillion or 20 trillion? Who knows where it's going? But I think now it's not just the dollar severing its ties to gold. It's going to be the world severing its ties to the dollar. The world is going to go off the dollar standard and back on the gold standard. And I think that this is going to be a more precipitous drop in the dollar's value than it was in the 70s. And so we can see something equally as impressive in the price of gold. Well, we're not overheated at all. I've got gold at, uh, I would put it at $15,000 an ounce before 2025. But as I point out, if you're going to $15,000 an ounce, you got to get to $3,000, $5,000, and $7,000 first. So there's plenty of room to run, plenty of room for profits. But, you know, when I say things like that, David, I want to be clear. There's a lot of analysis behind it. I don't just pull a big number out of the air and you know for publicity because I could care less. But um, if you just took the average, and there are a couple ways to think about it. Just take the average of the two prior bull markets I mentioned. So 71 to 80, nine years, 2,200 percent. 
99 to 2011, the 12-year bull market, um, about 700%. Just take the average. You don't have to go to the higher of the two or extrapolate. Just take the average of those two bull markets. You would say, okay, well, the, the next bull market is going to be a little over 10 years, and it's going to go up. Um, it's, it's going to go up 1,500%. So, uh, so using that as your base, just take the average of the two. You say, all right, 10 years from 2015, that puts you out to 2025. And at you know, 1,400%, it puts you at $15,000 an ounce off a 1050 base. So that's just, that's just history. But there are other ways to think about it. Now, going to Peter's point, um, you know, I don't know if there'll be a gold standard or not, but I do know that gold will move, the price of gold will move in the direction of where it would need to be if you're going to have a gold standard. Now, so what I find interesting is that if you use the just the history of the last two bull markets and average them, or if you use you know a rigorous calculation, what's the what's the implied non-deflationary price? Interestingly, they come out in the same place. I don't think they have to. They're two different methods, but they both point to fifteen thousand dollars an ounce sometime over the next three or four years. Course, That's what Jim, I though, expect. It's, it, it's a moving target because between now and then, there's a lot of money that's going to be printed. So, uh, you know, correct. who knows that, that, where, where, where the price of gold has to end up by the time we finish all the money printing. That is correct. It is a moving target. The numbers I gave you are based on current levels, but Peter's exactly right. You keep printing money. You, you need a higher price to, if you want to reference gold and not cause deflation, which they don't, you're going to need a progressively higher price of gold. But I will not be surprised if we wake up uh, some morning or turn on the uh, nightly news before going to bed some Sunday night and find out that uh, the G8 or the G20 or the IMF or uh, some of those guys have been meeting, if not at the Plaza Hotel in New York as they did in 1985, uh, uh, have come to some new currency arrangement. And perhaps they will announce that uh, central banks will start buying gold at uh, $5,000 an ounce, uh, perhaps in the name of uh, of helping the poor countries where gold is mined, or uh, perhaps uh, very candidly in the name of reliquifying central banks themselves, those that still have uh, sufficient gold reserves uh, to uh, uh, reliquify themselves with. Uh, I believe it was Lyle Gramling, a uh, former member of the Fed's Board of, uh, of Governors. If it wasn't him, it was another former member of the Fed's Board of Governors who was on Business News Network in Canada a year or two ago when he was uh, getting hit with pretty uh, serious criticism of uh, the deterioration of the Fed's balance sheet. It's, you know, taking all this crappy paper uh, to uh, rescue various financial institutions. And uh, uh, Gramley or the Fed governor, whoever it was, volunteered to the reporter that he was overlooking something and that what he was overlooking uh, were the 8,000 tons of gold uh, on the books of the United States government, uh, on the books of uh, the Fed that were being uh, valued only at the antique price of $42.22 an ounce, and that if there was a market revaluation of this gold, uh, Gramley said, the Fed's uh, uh, balance sheet would look immensely better. Well, this was something that was volunteered by a former member of the Fed's Board of Governors. Uh, it signifies that you know maybe the Fed thinks about gold a lot more than uh, than than we do. History shows that gold revaluations have been used in the past. The rising dollar price of gold is the quickest way to cause general inflation. If the markets don't do it, the governments can. It works every time. No surprise that European countries are repatriating their gold reserves and countries like Russia and China are dumping US government bonds and increasing their gold reserves. Will the price of gold increase steadily until $10,000 or it will be revalued over the night? Would gold reach $10,000 in one year or over a 20-year period? Time will tell us. But as I mentioned before in previous videos, based in history and fundamentals, I believe the top of the price in this gold bull run will be around the year of 2027. Again, it is smart to have gold as part of your portfolio. Just don't overdo it. Not in gold, not in silver, not in